Last video, we talked about how we can take ordinary extruded aluminum, use some 3D printed shims, and then allow us to connect our one inch EMT connectors onto that extruded aluminum, giving all kinds of different possibilities of how you might incorporate this unique material into your builds. Thank you so much for the response. It was a great response from the community. You guys had ideas on how to improve this idea and how to make these shims even better. And we haven't forgotten about that. We are gonna do a follow-up video with different 3D printed designs of these shims uh, so we can make that available to you guys. But today I wanted to show you just a glimpse into the ecosystem of 20 by 20 extruded aluminum accessories. I went crazy and I did a whole shopping spree. Um, tons of Chinesium little doodads. We've got all these things and I think they provide some really unique solutions to solving problems in your build. So this is by no means a end all be all of the accessories. I encourage you to go on and look at accessories that are made for 20 by 20 extruded aluminum and see what works for your project. But maybe this will get your wheels turning, give you some ideas, and um, you can use it maybe in your next project. So let's dive in. Um, if you're not familiar with the solution that we came up with, these are just three, or excuse me, four 3D printed shims that go into the slots like that. And then it allows basically what was a square profile, turns it into a round profile that is just the right diameter so that we can take our one inch EMT conduit clamps that normally clamp onto one inch round EMT conduit and then clamp onto a 20 by 20 extruded aluminum. And that's 20, 20 millimeters edge to edge by 20 square profile, right? So uh, we mentioned a couple ideas on how that might, you know, help you build in your project. And I think one of those is adding linear motion. I think that's one of the exciting things. And one of the first accessory here I have is this common plate uh, with rubber wheels that ride in this channel. You can see that the channel has a little bit of a chamfer there, and then these wheels ride in that chamfer. Now, I don't recommend you get this plate because look how much it bent. It didn't fit at all and actually had to, had to bend. But the concept behind these is you have two wheels that are fixed in position, and then you have two wheels that you can adjust with this offset nut. And the way that you would do that is just get a, a wrench here, and then by sliding and turning that, you're not loosening or tightening this, but the wheel moves inboard or out, outboard. So when you're, when you're getting it uh, on the extruded aluminum, you wanna make sure it's in the most out position and then goes on there. And then you can mount different things to the plate. You see these a lot in 3D printers and it just rotates like that or it slides like that. And you have a, a linear motion. So you could mount this to a drawer. I mean, as complicated as a, a CNC, but it definitely, it's an inexpensive way to have that linear rail. Now, one that I've seen and has been used in 3D printing machines and CNC's is this concept where you've got the carriage but you also have these timing belt loops and typically this would be mounted to a, a stepper motor on one end and that's the way that you would program in the linear motion. You can see these timing belts they're meant so they don't stretch right so as a, as a pulley moves this back and forth, you pretty much get a one-to-one -one movement on the linear slide. And what I think is really cool is they've machined in these loops and you can see that where the loops come together, it locks it in place. So the timing belt teeth actually 
lock it in and you don't need any additional hardware. Uh, but you see these a lot in 3D printers, CNC's, and that's another example of that linear plate uh, that could provide one way, one axis motion for you. A whole bunch of ideas there. So um, this one seems to be pretty qu good quality. I'll put some links down below, but this one I wouldn't recommend, and it's just kind of the pitfall of using these things. You can see it's, it's smiling at you after being on, on the linear rail. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of possibilities there. Um, Sticking with that same sort of motion theme, here's a simple one. This is basically just a, a hanger slide, and you can see that the profile of it matches, matches that. It goes in this slide, and then it can slide however much you want. You can put limits on it. So say you had to have a curtain or something that you wanted to have motion like that or hang, you could accomplish it with something like that. This one here, these are cast. This, uh, this carabiner is absolute junk, so uh, might be a good option. Or you could 3D print that if that's something that you're looking to do. Uh, we found these hinges that are kind of neat. Uh, these are hinges that move like that. I guess there's a 180 degree range of motion. It comes with this um, regular screw, uh, Phillips screw in there. And in this kit there was also provided these kind of these, um, what would you call it, handle tightening devices. So you could almost lock it down in one position um, and then quick release, loosen it, and then you've got the free range of motion. So in this, it, this is more of a hinge, right? And I think, I think it's meant to 80, uh, these 20 by 20 um, extruded aluminum, they have this hole here. And a common practice is to tap that with a, a tap, and then that allows you to uh, put this on the end. So you can imagine one piece there, another part there, and then you've got a, a really big end-to-end -end hinge. Uh, conversely, I think you could take a couple, or grind down a couple of these pegs, or these uh, indexing tabs, and then you could mount them along the rail like that, and do a hinge in that way. And that kind of brings us to a common fastening method with these. Um, most of these accessories rely on this T-nut that then slides into that channel there and then gives you the flexibility to position that wherever you want. Uh, I've commonly seen two, side, two types. This one won't fit from the top, so you have to slide it in from the side, and then you have ones that are kind of, they've got a, a cam action so that you can drop in, you can drop it in, and then as you tighten it, the other direction, as you tighten it, it kind of, and again, this is, these are really fiddly, uh, but as you tighten it, you can see it kind of cammed over, came underneath the profile of the lip, and then you tighten that down and it, it holds like that. So there's kind of two different styles of nuts. But they provided, in these hinges, they provided that. And then you can see you would, I guess, have to disassemble this whole thing, attach these with the T-nut, and then you've got your hinge. Um, kind of cumbersome, not the best, but uh, a unique accessory in its own right. So we got those. That provides a little bit of motion. Um, next is, you know, if you wanted to do some hinges, found these really simple, simple kind of piano hinge or door hinge. And you can imagine if you have two pieces of aluminum together, you could create a, a really 
tightly closing door hinge like that if you wanted like a cabinet door or something like that. And again, um, might be done with some, some of the nuts and a few screws. And it actually came, into a, came with a package of this handle. I like this a lot. This is a, a neat thing. I think we might want to incorporate something like this for EMT as well, just a simple handle. Um, but you can see those T-nuts are on the back. And then in this case, you just have to drop them in place and make sure that they're under, they're extended enough so they're underneath the lip there, and then just tighten them down, and that, that has cammed to the side, and then you can really wrench down. So you could add a handle pretty much on any part of the extruded aluminum. That's pretty cool too. So I like those. Those are good accessories. Um, similar to the nuts that you can drop into the slot, they also have T-posts. So here's an example of, a, this is an M5 thread. I was trying to find quarter 20 or 3 8 16 to uh, pair with our threaded inserts, but that's a good visualization that you can drop it in and as you tighten it, it spreads apart. A lot of possibilities with something like that. Here's one that I thought was pretty cool too. This is basically to connect and splice together two pieces of extruded aluminum. So that goes in the slots there, right? And then there is four uh, grub screws, and I've got them in here. Four of these grub screws that as you, you can see that they uh, loosen, and then as you tighten these in the four places, uh, it pushes against the back of the aluminum and then pushes this splice up into the channel and provides a pretty sturdy way to put two pieces of extruded aluminum together. Um, and you, you probably would want to put multiple pieces, depending on your application, uh, in there, not just one. You know, if you had, had one on one side and maybe one on the other, you would have a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong joint there as well. So that's that one. And uh, lastly, we've got a kind of a, a rubber, this molded rubber foot, so which you could place with the same technique. You get get the uh, get the bolt in there. Put the T nut on, and then drop it in place. Tighten it down. And then you've got a, a floor safe rubber foot anywhere along the extruded aluminum. I hope that piqued your interest, gave you some ideas. The best part of this is that ecosystem is already developed. You can pick out these solutions and use them for your next build, whether you're using just extruded aluminum or pairing it with your EMT conduit builds. Uh, if you've liked one of these and think it'd be useful, leave a comment down below. Consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.